How's it going everybody? Welcome to my Jedi Fallen Order review. Now I have completely beaten this game start to finish. I have found all the collectibles, I've explored all of the maps and all the different planets and stuff, and I've done pretty much everything you can do in this game. So now that I've done everything that I want to do in this game, I can finally give it a score, tell you what my thoughts are, is it good, is it bad? And I did a first impressions video, which a lot of people hated on for my concerns in that video. And some of those concerns still carry on into this review, they carry over, because some of those things did not get better. And then a lot of those things did actually get better. So the game ended up being uh, better than what I thought it was going to be based off my first impressions. Like the combat gets better. Uh, some of the puzzles get better. Like I was having trouble with the puzzles, which I'll go into more detail here in a little bit. But overall, I think it's a good game. It's pretty fun. It definitely, like I was getting more and more hooked as I progressed and the story is really good. Uh, so let's go over all of the good things in this game first. Like I really like the story. It goes more in depth in between episodes three and four. It gives you like an insight of like what it was like to be a Padawan during the time of like when Order 66 happened. There's a lot of references to like the Clone Wars and stuff because this is only a couple years later. War is still going on. Uh, people are still fighting back like the Wookiees on Kashyyyk. There's still like wreckage and stuff just everywhere from the Clone Wars which is stuff that I really find interesting because I really love the prequels and I love just the Clone Wars era and having all these stormtroopers and stuff as your enemy, yet there's still some stuff left behind from the clones is really cool to me. And I like just all the Easter eggs and the hidden things scattered throughout the environment that you'll find from the Clone Wars. Like I found some uh, blown up droids and I found multiple sets of armor from clones and there's still clone weapons and clone spaceships and just tons of stuff from the clone era. And there's multiple planets you can go to. I think there's five total, maybe? I could be wrong. That's just off the top of my head. I think there's about five. That's like including ones that you can just fast travel to and then ones that are like locked behind the story that you can't go back to later. But overall, I thought the plot was good. The character development is a little rushed in places. Like you're not going to get real in-depth character development. Like all the characters seem to grow on each other really quickly and it feels like it's sped up. I like some of the characters. I think that they're okay. There just isn't as much character development as I would have liked uh, compared to like other single player games like Mass Effect or something like a huge RPG kind of game. You're not going to get that kind of character development, unfortunately, which I think this game could have done really great as like a Mass Effect game because like travel on your ship, you can like walk around and stuff. I think it would have really helped this game out if it had some Mass Effect kind of RPG style aspects to it. But the character development, it's okay, it's passable. Like I said, you're not gonna get anything too, too crazy. You're not gonna like deeply fall in love with these characters. You don't see them for that long of a period of time. That part does feel kind of rushed. Like you meet these characters, you become friends with them like almost instantly. And there's a few moments that really make you feel and care for these characters, which is good because it's it's good writing, but there just isn't enough time spent in game with these characters. That That's my only gripe with the character development. I'm talking about the other characters. Cow is kind of a different story. Cow, you can actually feel that you're getting stronger as you progress, which is really good. The more you progress, you learn more force powers. You uh, unlock more powers for your lightsaber. You get more customization stuff for your saber. I'd say the cow character development is pretty good. Like you actually feel accomplished based off of like where you were at the very beginning versus where you are at the very end. Like it feels like you actually did stuff. Like you put in the work, you made your character better. It's pretty good. And then another thing that this game got right was just the sheer amount of enemies that you can fight. Anything from regular stormtroopers to like heavy stormtroopers that have rocket launchers to dudes that have like mini guns with shields kind of like in Battlefront 2, like a heavy. And there's scout troopers and scout commanders and purge troopers that have different varieties. And then there's tons of different creatures, and it varies from planet to planet. Like, all the planets have different creatures. They all have their different, like, fighting styles. Like, some characters will be up in your face, and others will keep a distance. Like, some will use range, like arrows and stuff. Some will try to shoot you at range. And then you have just people up in your face and people shooting you at the same time. So, so you kind of have to adapt your fighting style based off of all these different enemy types. And some creatures are big, some creatures are small. 
there's like all the boss fights that are different varieties and stuff. So this game just absolutely nailed how many characters there are that you can fight and it does a good job of mixing it up so you'll see a just wide variety as you're exploring of just different enemies that you can encounter so if you are a hardcore star wars fan you love star wars video games highly recommend this game it's really fun star wars experience but one of my concerns in my first impressions was that the combat felt clunky and it just wasn't good when you fought multiple groups of enemies and stuff and everybody was just hating on me for that and it does get better like a lot of my concerns were touched on in the game for example you unlock a double-sided lightsaber which is for crowd control that was one of my concerns when you don't have any upgrades and you don't have any powers and you're just like just starting off the combat can feel just clunky and overwhelming and it's not and it's like the wrong kind of difficult because you'll have five or six people at you at once and for me my camera wasn't locking on correctly and I'd lock on to one character but I'd have like five of them hitting me at once and it just was overwhelming in a bad way but once you get like different combo moves and different force powers like the pull and the push and the saber throw ability and you get the double sided lightsaber to take out and hit multiple enemies at once then the combat is just it did a complete 180 for me like I enjoyed the combat a lot towards the end and the boss fights the one-on-one -on -one boss fights are my favorite parts because it's so rewarding but the boss fights are pretty difficult like some of them killed me like eight or nine times before I could finally figure out what to do and you have to time your blocks I could never really get the parrying done right like I could block blaster bolts perfectly I could not for the life of me get to parry anybody's attacks like I tried numerous times like right when you think that you're supposed to hit the block button to parry it just doesn't work for me and I've asked other people if they could get it to work and it's just kind of clunky in general if they had some sort of like indicator of when you should parry I think that would make it easier but like like I said I can parry blaster bolts that part's easy to deflect them back at the opponent but uh, blocking and dodging is all great there's a stamina system and the force system and the force system goes along with the stamina system so you can like block and then counter with a force push or you can do like a huge combo move the combat's pretty good it, it really is like there's quite a few like big bosses but then scattered throughout the environment there's like these little mini bosses hidden around uh, there's bounty hunters that show up, which are like mini boss fights. They have huge health bars and you have to take them out, which is really cool and interesting. Like when you're exploring, you can just stumble across a mini boss fight randomly just anywhere on the map. They can just catch you off guard. Boom, here's a bounty hunter trying to kill you, which that part was really cool to me. Like I love just how I'm exploring mini boss fight. So that part was fun. It keeps you on your toes. In the combat, like I said, I didn't like it at first, but it really grew on me and I really enjoyed it towards the end. And some games for me, I just don't like at the beginning. Like my favorite game ever, ever of all time is Skyrim. And I did not like Skyrim the first couple hours that I played it. Like I really had to sit there and force myself to play Skyrim. And then a lot of the problems I had with Skyrim got better as I played. And this is one of those games, for instance, like a lot of the problems I had with it, which another thing that I did not like at first was the puzzles. In my first impressions video, I was talking about the puzzles and they hit you with puzzle after puzzle after puzzle after puzzle. Well, I noticed that only in certain areas they like really hit you with puzzles like in some of the temples and stuff there's more puzzles than on other planets for example some planets it didn't feel like there was hardly any puzzles at all and i think the reason i was getting so frustrated with some of the puzzles i was encountering was because my game actually kept glitching so i would be doing the puzzle the correct way but the glitch was preventing me from completing the puzzle so i was wandering around completely clueless as to what to do because the map isn't really set up to hold your hand which I like about the game I like that it's difficult it doesn't tell you where to go doesn't give you indicators of where to go at all you just have to look at your map and figure it out on your own which that's fine with me I like that I like a challenge in a video game but what was frustrating was I would be doing a puzzle I'd look at the map it wouldn't tell me where to go and just I had no idea what to do so I've spent uh, I probably spent two to three hours 
just on glitch puzzles and stuff. So once I got past the majority of the puzzles and the heartaches of the glitches and stuff, for example, one of the glitches I had, there was a puzzle where I had to take this like this little lantern of fire and I had to throw it onto this chain to put out the fire. Well, I th that's what I thought I had to do and I kept throwing it onto the chain, but there was like a waterfall behind the chain. Well, I would throw the fire onto the chain to like break the chain, but the water kept putting it out no matter how many times I did it. So I just walked around aimlessly for a while and then I eventually just tried it again and then it suddenly worked an hour later. Uh, so that's just one example. There's a number of glitches which I'll, I'll get into. But the puzzles got better. I think the puzzles were pretty rewarding. The ones, um, some of them are unique from one another, but there's also a little downside to the puzzles which I'll get into in the, uh, the things that I dislike about the game. But yeah, the story is really good in terms of Star Wars games. Like if you're a Star Wars fan, highly recommend the game. The combat is pretty fun and rewarding. The boss fights are all fun. The exploration, I think is really fun. The puzzles, for the most part, are pretty fun. And the ending, I'm not gonna say like any spoilers, but the ending had me like, it kind of caught me off guard. Like the ending of the story, I have a few questions regarding that, which I hope that they have more DLC in the future for this game. But the ending caught me a little off guard. I was a little surprised and like at the edge of my seat and impressed at the same time. Yeah, overall, it's a really good game. It's really fun and highly recommend it if you guys are just looking for a single player Star Wars experience. And then another thing I really enjoyed is the lightsaber customization. I think that part is great. Like that is awesome i love that they took the real life lightsaber customization from galaxy's edge and they applied that to this game there's tons of different hilts and saber color options and you can mix and match so you can have like this part of this hilt combined with this part of this hilt and make your own like unique looking saber and that part's really cool there's a few things i wish you could do extra like a few different hilt options, or like if you wanted a single sided blade, you could just have that sort of hilt compared to like, as you progress the game, it kind of forces you to have like a double sided lightsaber. I would still like to have the option of maybe customization for just one half. Like if I don't ever want to use a double sided, then I don't have to. Um, I wish there was more late game stuff for that. Like maybe, I know it's not lore friendly, but once you beat the game, there should at least be the option to have maybe a red saber or a black or a white saber just to give you more options. Cause once you beat it and the story's already done, I don't see any harm of having a red saber or maybe uh, you could have two different crystals and make one half of the saber a different color than the other half. Like there's a bunch of different stuff they could expand on. But for the most part, I really love the lightsaber customization and that part alone, I'd give like a nine out of 10. Like I really, really enjoyed that lightsaber customization stuff. Now let's get into the bad things, which I've seen a number of reviews and I've been seeing like nine out of tens and eight out of tens and just these really high numbers, but I'm not seeing too many people complain about the bad things. Now I've been playing video games for well over 20 years now. I've played Dark Souls, I've played Tomb Raiders and Uncharted and puzzle games and uh, tons of RPGs like Mass Effect and there's like all these single player games that I've played and this reminds me of like Tomb Raider, Uncharted, Spider-Man and God of War. It's kind of those games I'm going to compare this to. So one of the major downsides that I have with this game is that when I played Spider-Man and God of War and even Uncharted and Tomb Raider, this game's way shorter. Like I have close to 100% of this game. I found all the collectibles. The only thing I haven't done is found the secrets. Like there's like two remaining I have, but there's no purpose to finding the secrets for me because when you find the secrets, it upgrades your like overall force powers and your max health. Well, there's no point in doing that because this has no end game. Like once you beat it, you can free roam and you can uh, go back and you can find the collectibles, but that's it. You can't go back and like redo boss fights. You can't replay story missions. You just roam around. And that's all you can do. So, like, if you find all the collectibles, that leaves you with literally nothing but just wandering the map and killing enemies. And all the enemies are in the same exact spots. So you basically just are like, oh, I want to go fight a purge trooper. 
Uh, so I know on this map in this spot, there's a purge trooper. I'll just go there and I'll fight that guy. And then he's dead and then that's it. But yeah, this game just doesn't have any in-game stuff to it. And when you're free roaming, it kind of just feels dull and boring. The only thing it gives you left to do is to just restart the game and start over with none of your force powers or any of that stuff. Like, I would at least like the option to go back and do some of the boss fights with more health or more abilities. So they need to have some sort of in-game mode. Because I would like to come back to this game and do this stuff. Because when you beat the game and you have all these extra abilities and all the, uh, the different saber colors and stuff unlocked, they should have, like, a horde mode where you can just face different types of enemies on different waves like wave one could be stormtroopers and then like wave 10 could be like a boss fight and you could have some atsts or bounty hunters or whatever to give you something extra to do or look at games like tomb raider or uncharted or mass effect those were all huge single player experiences that was the focus of the game like it was a single player game but they also had multiplayer tacked on to give you something to do after you beat the game I think this game would have done great with that. If this game would have had the single player story that it has right now with an extra multiplayer aspect tacked on, like 1v1s with saber combat, like take the saber combat from this game where you actually have to block and parry and time your dodges and stuff and give me a 1v1 mode against other people online where you can customize your abilities, you can customize your uh, lightsabers, like your hilt and your color and stuff, and then just have a rank 1v1 session online this game would be phenomenal because you would have so much to do after you beat it that's one of my biggest gripes with this game is i like close to 100 percent completed the game before at the same period in time i wouldn't have even beaten spider-man or god of war yet not to mention once you beat god of war and spider-man and god of war you can still go back and explore the areas and still find easter eggs and stuff but it still has more to do than what this game does and spider-man once you beat spider-man they had like free dlcs and stuff free costumes and and the free roam at least had like side missions and stuff. There'd be like random events pop up, uh, different crimes you could stop. There were still things to do in Spider-Man after you beat the game. And it just doesn't feel that way with this game. That's why I think it needed that extra like horde mode or that extra multiplayer tacked on. Which I don't see, because I brought that up on Twitter and a lot of people were like, it's supposed to be single player only. It's supposed to be just single player experience, no multiplayer. That's exactly the same thing that happened with Uncharted and Tomb Raider and Mass Effect. Like, the main focus was single player. I'm just saying that multiplayer would have helped it in that regard. It would have given you more to do. So, it's not a very long game. Um, I still recommend it just for the experience, just playing a Star Wars game, but it's nothing like a long RPG. It's nothing. It's got nothing on other single player games. It's hard to compare single player games. Like, is it worth the $60 price tag to it? Because if you beat it in a day or two days and there's nothing to do afterwards, it's kind of hard to recommend it for $60 because even though it's not an RPG, like when you compare it to a Mass Effect, a Skyrim, a Fallout, like those are single player games too, but those give you days or even weeks worth of content for the same $60. Um, and then as for the performance issues, this game definitely has performance issues. I fell through the map at least three times. The, the frame rates constantly drop, at least on the regular Xbox and the regular PlayStation, like the just straight up original PS4 and original Xbox. Those have some performance issues. I've talked to people that have like all of them, a PC, Xbox One X, and the PS4 Pro. Uh, they still have some frame rate issues too in like the big areas where it's trying to load, um, but they don't have as many compact frame rate drops. So if you spent the extra money to get the PS4 Pro, for example, you're probably not gonna have as many performance issues. But for me, on the regular Xbox, the frame rates would drop constantly during fights the that would have constant glitches throughout the game sometimes i would just be exploring and the map wouldn't load at all so i'd see like floating stormtroopers off in the distance and then i would fall through the map i'd have puzzles that just wouldn't work which is why i was frustrated at the beginning because of the puzzles uh, there would be glitches so like the puzzles would glitch like i would be completing the puzzle and it wouldn't work some of the puzzles you have to take like a, a cord or like a power cable and plug it in well on my game it just wouldn't plug he would just walk beside it and he wouldn't do the action of plugging it in which made it impossible to progress i had to like 
restart it. There's those kind of issues. And then another problem I have in combination to the glitches is the no fast travel. There, like the no fast travel part gets really annoying, especially when like I was on Dothamir and I climbed clear to the top. Like there's this huge mountain you can climb. I got clear to the top and then I fell through the map all the way to the bottom. But then my character grabbed a hold of something and he landed at the wee bottom of the map. So I had to, once I landed, climb all the way back up the mountain a second time because you can't fast travel. So the glitch really screwed me over uh, in that regard. So the glitches are frequent, but not like so frequent that I'm willing to like knock too many points off of the game for that. Uh, nothing that like a few patches and updates can't fix. So it's not that big of a deal. The parkour, it's not as good as like Assassin's Creed or something like oftentimes you'll be climbing and your character just won't grab a hold of something or you'll jump and you'll miss Luckily when you like fall off a cliff or something It just takes a wee bit of health and it just respawns you like right back to where you were So if you jump and you don't grab a hold and you fall to your death, it's not a big deal You just are right back where you were so that part. I appreciate I think they did that just because I mean, they know it's a parkour game. So, like, I couldn't tell you how many times I went to, like, wall run and my character would just jump onto the wall and then just face plant and fall to his death. So the parkour isn't perfect, but it's it's not that big of a deal since it respawns you right there. But as for the no fast travel thing, I said this in my uh, first impressions video. They should either let you fast travel between different meditation points on the map because you can see them on the map like they're highlighted as blue circles uh, like you know where they are well they count as checkpoints if they count as checkpoints when you die why can't i just travel to them like that saves so much time especially like once you beat the game or if you're just exploring because you want to find the collectibles it is so annoying like the first time second time it's okay you go out exploring and then you have to walk back to your ship no big deal but like the eighth or the ninth time like let's say you go exploring you come back and you realize oh i missed a chest in this area but the area is all the way over here well you have to travel through the map all the way over there and then you have to go all the way back to your ship like it on average takes like 10 minutes just to get back to your ship and that's if you killed all the enemies already. Like you could either skip the enemies, it's just the same enemies over and over. I honestly think the only reason that they don't have fast travel is to slow the game down. Because I, like I said, I almost 100% of the game, by this point, I wouldn't have even beat Spider-Man or God of War. And that's with all that traveling. If you honestly could fast travel back to your ship, I think that would have cut another two or three hours off my overall experience because there's so much time just running through the map if they added that fast travel option i seriously think it would speed up the gameplay and people would beat this game really quickly i think that is the only reason there is no fast travel so i found all the collectibles on every single planet and i'm willing to bet 80 percent of that was just me climbing running walking and it just got really repetitive and that is what i meant in my early impressions of the puzzles just get in your way to slow you down or the traveling just gets in your way to, th to slow you down like i saw a few of the same puzzles and like the same areas like copy pasted like the same type of puzzle just in a different area of the map it feels like that to me they have so many of those in certain spots to try to slow down your gameplay in that in tangent with the no fast traveling back to your ship if you took away all the excess puzzles and all the running around, it would easily shed off four to five hours of gameplay. So if it's a 20 hour game, it's probably more like a 16 hour game. So that is one of my big gripes. I think if they just made it so you, maybe not traveling to the meditation points, but at least if I travel all the way through Kashyyyk and I get to the very edge of the map, let me fast travel back to my ship. That's all I'm asking. And then as for the graphics, this kind of goes into performance issues as well, a little bit. Uh, the graphics look really good in certain spots, and then in other parts, it really struggles. Like I noticed on Kashyyyk, it's really struggling sometimes. Like the facial animations don't load in correctly. None of the Wookiees look good. Like every single Wookiee looks like Battlefront 2015 Chewbacca and just the foliage and everything. Like my console was having a real hard time trying to load in all the different plants and all the different character models and everything at once. So like on other planets, it's not as bad, but Kashyyyk, it really 
I could tell it was having a hard time. And let's talk about the customization for a second, other than the lightsaber. The clothes for Cal are horrible. Like, it's just poncho colors, and you can choose the underneath sleeve of your poncho, and that's it. Like, no Jedi robes, no hoods, no goggles, no capes, no nothing cool. And you could argue, oh, the point of the game is to hide as a Jedi. Well, at a certain point, you're not really hiding the fact that you're a Jedi anymore. So once you beat the game, like, give me some Jedi robes, give me some cloaks, give me something to customize my character. So this game's customization is really, really bad. Not fun at all to customize, like, I can have a pink poncho, I can have a tan poncho, I can have a black poncho. That part isn't good. <laughs> I don't know, it's like they put all their focus into the lightsaber customization, and they didn't even care or try to customize any of the characters. Now you can change the look of BD-1. That part's okay, because you at least see BD-1 constantly. Uh, the BD-1 colors are pretty good. You can make him look rustic, or black, or yellow, or green, or whatever color you want for him. Like, that part of the customization, I'm fine with. But customizing your ship, that's also a waste. You don't fly your ship. You don't see what your ship looks like. Uh, you don't see what your ship looks like while you're inside of it. You only see your ship when it's parked at the landing pad. And I don't think it was worth the time and effort it took them to like give you the options to change the color of your ship. And they advertise that in like the deluxe edition and stuff. To change the color of your ship just to see it at the landing pad. And you only hang out at the landing pad like a couple minutes. So you never see the ship. I don't think it's worth upgrading the color of it. So the customizations are just abysmal. They're horrible. Not worth it at all. So other than the lightsaber customizations, it's just not good. But other than that, those few graphical problems, the uh, few glitches and frame rate losses and stuff, the no fast travel and the short overall story, it's kind of the only problems I have with it. Overall, it is a very good game. I did enjoy it. It's just not long enough for what I would have liked. Now, it is longer than the uh, Force Unleashed 2. I'll give it that. And it's it's And it's definitely up there with like, some of the top Star Wars games. I wish it would have been maybe half of what it is longer. Like take half the game's length and add that to it or maybe double the length of the game. And then I think this would have been in a really good spot. So as for this game's rating, I'm probably gonna give it an eight out of 10. Cause I, I did really enjoy it. And I do recommend you guys get this if you're Star Wars fans. But the only reason I'm not giving it any higher cause I gave God of War and Spider-Man both nines. And it's just not as good as those games because the, this game not having any in-game content just really gets it for me. So that is my review, guys. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Um, did you guys enjoy it? What did you guys think of the story? What do you think of the customization options? And then let me know what you guys think of the in-game options. Like, would you guys like to have like a horde mode added in the future? Would you like to have a like multiplayer added? I doubt that they're going to do that at this point, like a Mass Effect multiplayer or a Tomb Raider or an Uncharted kind of multiplayer. Like something needs to be done about the end game content, because like I said, I like the game. I really want to be able to come back and do more stuff with the game. But for me, it just feels like a one and done thing, which is really disappointing. Like, I've spent $60, been hyped for a year to play this game, beat it in two days and then not go back to it again. Like, I don't have anything left to do in the game, which is really just disappointing. So I'm giving it an 8 out of 10, telling you it's worth it if you're a Star Wars fan. And yeah, that's going to do it for my review. So if you guys enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. It'd be greatly appreciated. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Be sure to check out another video. I have links to like all the customization options and all the different saber parts and stuff. If you guys want to see those, I have those as videos. So you guys can check those out at the end. And that's going to do it for me, guys. And I will talk to you all next time. We would be honored if you would join us. You cannot resist.